What's up everyone, it's the boy NSRace97 aka Nathan Safin and welcome to Daytona International Speedway for race number one of season four of the Power Truck Series. First time in almost two years that we are running the Truck Series and we are back with some changes but at the end of the day some things never change. Still kicking off the season with Daytona, still ending the season with Homestead but now we have GNS position set up CTS and now we have 18 race season. 11 regular season races and 7 chase races. But we don't even need to talk about the chase car off yet. It is Daytona, the Burger King 250, and one driver of this 40 to up field after 20, 25 laps will kick off season 4 the right way by running the Burger King 250. I'm not alone for this one. I am joined by none other than Alexander Graham up here in the booth. Yeah, definitely excited for this one because. We're going to have ourselves a lot of different drivers up front in this race, but uh, with that being said, we may not see a wreck. It could be a caution for your race, um, but anyone can win it. And that's the beauty of this race right here at the Daytona International Speedway. It can go to any of these 40 drivers here tonight. Let's uh, have to see how it all goes down. Yeah, yeah it can be very interesting. Of course, uh, we have a little bit of a range gap, 55 to 65. That won't really play into a huge factor here at Daytona. It, it might, but it probably won't. And then the aggression's at 75 for this track, and then it might go down for the rest of the season. I don't really know yet. But uh, how do you think the physics will play into a factor, and how do you think the range might play into that this year at Daytona, especially? Yeah, I think in this race specifically, we're not going to see too much of a difference in the racing. There's a lot less drag on these trucks than uh, there was when we had the CTS physics, so. These guys are going to be moving around just a little bit more. They're going to have the ability to move around a little bit more than they're uh, used to. And, uh, also, you know, you adjusted the aggression there a little bit, so it's not going to be a 100-100 aggression, more like in the 70 range. So that's why I say we may not see a wreck in this race here tonight, because these guys could very well uh, just keep it clean, considering they're not as aggressive as they have been in the past. Very, very true. But as they tell us, they could still crash. Who knows? Anything can happen. And we are set for a great season here at Daytona. We have 20 rookies, 16 veterans, and of course we have this defending uh, Power Truck Series champion, Nathan Bader, returning in the number 44 truck. We will get through all the drives throughout the season, but uh, since this is the season opener, we don't have to go over the points. So let's go ahead and get things one off for the Power Truck Series season opener. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get these engines will fire up, and let's get the season four of the Power Truck Series underway here at Daytona. It will be Twinton Wakefield drives this, this is driver on a, the pole, and alongside him is Justin Zidell. Roll number two, we got Colin Quapley and Mitchell Collins. Roll number three, we got the number 32 of Lance Smith Jr. and the 16 of Chad Gronkowski. Roll number three, we got Josh Ramson. In the number 98 and the 30 and Matt Davis and then rounding out the top 10 we got one of the part-time drivers that made through qualifying last night the 35 of Igor Buello and the number one of Elijah Gordon gonna make sure that everyone is rolling off and it looks like we are so 40 drivers here at Daytona 25 laps no pit stops and honestly no one is even worried about the points either it's just getting a win at Daytona, a big, big time race, probably one of the big races on the scene for the Power Truck Series. If you can win at Daytona, that means everything. Who do you think will win here in the Burger King 250? I think it's going to be the 98 of Josh Williams in there. I think you want to start up front in this race. I'm not really sure how much of a cycle we're going to see. Williamson definitely a solid driver, and uh, he's in a car that was formerly driven by my favorite Truck Series driver, but... Uh, I heard Benny Watson's in the 23 right now, but he's starting kind of midway through the field there. So I'm going Josh Williamson to get the job done here in the Burke Pink 250. Yeah, uh, last time we were here at Daytona for the JBL Cup Series for Speed Race, he had a terrible Speed Race in the Clash, in the Duels, in Qualifying, and in the 500. Maybe he can have a better night here tonight at Daytona to kick off the Power Truck Series. Well, first time I've been able to say this in nearly two years, but, but the Power Truck Series is officially back first race with this new PC. It's gonna be a fantastic season for the Power Truck Series Twin to Field and Justin Seidel. We are going welcome back to NSRace97 and welcome 
back to the Power Truck Series for season number four. A lot of shuffling on the first lap. Saw the lead change hands multiple times, but it will be Lance Machine Jr. leading lap number one of season four. But Chad Gronkowski, one of the many rookies, is going to take the race lead in that number 16 machine. Yeah, that inside lane looks really strong here to start off this race. And uh, there's Josh Williamson there all the way up to second now. Good run for Gronkowski in the number 16 machine. And right behind the 98 there, I believe that is the... 35 of Vigor Barreto, uh, who qualified his way in last night. An uncharted driver right there, all the way up to the third position already. And then behind them, you got the 22 of Tanner Parton, who ran a full season in the Turkey Hill Truck Series last fall. So, a lot of strong drivers moving their way up front here. Tanner Parton, new driver to the channel, but uh, like you said, did pretty good in the, the uh, line on the um, Truck Series, and now he's up to third. And this is something that we might see early on, with the aggression being lowered. We might see some double foul to kick off this race. Eventually, I would imagine these guys would make it three wide and maybe four wide. Most well, being of that, Bradley Ream makes it three wide on Taylor Pelton. Or at least try to, but not going to get there. And this is going to be very in um, interesting of how long this double foul lasts at the start of the Burger King 250. Yeah, a lot of it depends on just who's up front. And, you know, we will have some trucks that are going to be slightly faster than others. You know, you have that range in the ratings. And... The fascinating thing about, you know, the ratings is, you know, you'll put a range in the game, but when you start a race, the game will randomly pick a specific number for that driver or car to have for that specific race. So you never know what it's going to be when you have that range. That makes it very interesting. But uh, once we get to a certain point in this race, and we may already be seeing it right now, you have a couple guys who dominate out here who are just simply the faster trucks in the field. Start, certain other trucks may not have the aerodynamics, have the speed that is needed to lead this pack, but Williamson and Gronkowski may be in those positions to dominate this race. We'll just have to see. Yeah, we have to wait and see only on lap 4 of 25. Here comes the number 5 of Benny Moore. He's not going to sit around much longer. He's going to make it 3 wide with Elijah Gordon and Mitchell Collins. And here comes Eli Bright. He's going to follow that number 5 and starting to see a little bit more 3 wide and eventually there must, uh, this might translate to 4 wide or just more and more three wide as Eli Bray is shoving this number five up anymore past the 51 now and they are moving here at Daytona. Yeah, they're definitely trying to get that inside lane to work, but unlike in real life, you can get into that sucker hole as they call it. And you really don't lose much ground in the sucker hole here uh, on the Speedway Physics version of Daytona just because you're so close to everybody else. You get that draft uh, as the pack kind of closes in. So, you got Elijah Gordon, and then the 51 there of uh, Matthew Burnett in the middle. But uh, everyone else kind of swarming them there. You got the 5 machine there on the inside, Benny Moore. Shout out to Benny Moore, one for your team in the Wawa Sprint Series uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, great to see him driving alongside Benny Watson now. The only other driver I know with the name Benny. Yeah, fairly looking forward to see what he can do on my channel since I saw him in uh, on land. And here we go. Now, 3 wide is all over the place. Bradley Weemley in this third lane and the 22, the 51, and the 1 all stuck in the middle. 3 by 3 by 3 and might see some 3 wide layer back in the field. And now things are about to get intense here. Took a few laps, took 4, 5, 6 laps, but now we are 3 wide here at Daytona, but it's still Josh Ramson and Chuck Wankowski out front. But we might have something to say about this uh, leaning on uh, I'll leave this third lane. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Of course, it's not really much of a third lane right now because that sucker hole's kind of starting to come into fruition there. They got the 22 there of Tanner Parton kind of leading that third lane in the middle. Uh, looking on this inside lane, you got the 42 machine there of Eli Bright and behind him, Zachary Fitzwater. And uh, oh, look now, Fitzwater kind of peeking there to the inside of Eli Bright. Of course, Bright 
has the option of uh, opening that lane up for him. But they're going to keep it there at three wide. But you know, it's looking really good for Williamson and Gronkowski right now leading this field because no one seems to have the advantage right now on them. But I think the closer we get to the end of this race, the more aggressive these guys are going to be in trying to get that race lead. Yeah, we have to wait and see on that 8 of 25 already a very short race, but it is getting crunch time slowly because it is only 25 laps. You can't just sit and wait for something to happen. Uh, for Fitzy, I hope he has better luck than what he has on my channel. He, I don't think he's ever won on my channel, and that's a, a rare stat to see. He's had a terrible You're luck. Probably the only one. Probably. He's... Whatever it is, he's terrible on my channel. He has bad luck. He did get some momentum, though, towards the end of the regular season in the JBL Cup Series, so maybe he can translate that over to the Power Truck Series this season, as that 3 wide is basically gone now here at Daytona, but how about Andrew Miller, the second part-time driver, making his way up to the front now? Yeah, definitely a great job here out of Andrew Miller. Of course, you're not surprised to see it out of him either, you know, as another veteran driver. Um, and then the traditional number he likes to be in, number 47, uh, right there behind the 75 is Zachary Fitzwater. And uh, you had Ream and you had Benny Moore kind of move up there. And then everyone else kind of uh, stalled out after that. And now uh, we're kind of back down to the double eye that we're seeing kind of throughout most of the field right here. But Jack Gronkowski still leading this field in that 16 machine on that outside lane. But at some point here, I think we'll see someone else try to peek down. But right now, these guys are content with just riding around. There's no point in getting too overly aggressive with it and uh, risking causing a big wreck here at Daytona. This is definitely something that we've never seen here at Daytona on NS Race 97. And, and this is all because of the aggression being slightly lower than what it normally has been. It's normally been at 100. Aggression now is at 75 aggression. So... Just a little bit, but apparently it is enough for these guys to just ride around here at Daytona, double file. But we're only 10 laps complete, so 15 laps to go here in the Burger King 250. And all it takes is for these guys to all of a sudden get crazy, get three wide, maybe four wide, and it can get all sorts of nuts here at Daytona. But it is still the 16 and 98, but might have to watch out for the silly five trying to peek to the inside of the 98 of Josh Williamson. Yeah, you got Igor Bredo, another strong driver, no doubt about it. Of course, he's more known as an owner over on my side, but look at Benny Moore right here trying to get something to work there. It's a little bit harder for these guys to get the runs right now, and I think that's that's part of the GNS physics that we're seeing. These guys tend to race a little bit farther from each other uh, than they do on the CTS physics because they have a lot less drag, and uh, they're able to kind of just have that bubble in between them. So... It's a little bit difficult to get around these guys as they move throughout the field, but we'll have to see how Benny Moore and the 38 of Bradley Ream can maybe have a shot here. And Williamson taking a low line there to block Barreto, trying to hold that inside lane and just maybe get the advantage. It could very well between be between Williamson and Gronkowski for this race win. It very well could be. It could come down to the 16, though, because this 32 of Leon and Smith Jr. is starting to uh, give some good pushes to the 16. And um, last time by almost got clear of Josh Williamson, so if he can keep on doing that, then he might be able to really control this race uh, if he has a good enough truck. But uh, on lap 12, now on lap 13, halfway through the Burger, uh, the Burger King 250, and definitely a lot different race than what we normally see here at Daytona, but it's not been too bad. Just have to wait and see if anyone can make any moves now, there's some more people making some moves in the middle of the field. Dale Campbell is one of them, the 33 of Clinton Buchanan is making it, it three wide, and now he, the five twine, but not going to look out for him. Yeah, Benny Moore just seems to be looking a lot there to make that move, but just doesn't have the run to be able to sustain it. As you got uh, some three wide kind of going on in the back here, in the middle of the field. 61 there in the middle. That is Chris Reynolds. We're just going to have to see. We're down to 12 laps to go in this race, and we have not seen anybody dethrone Williamson or Gronkowski here, but I have a feeling that Barreto, Ream, and more, they're kind of just waiting in the wings to possibly make a move here before the end of this race. And uh, I'd watch out for him because uh, they're going to have a shot. Uh, Benny Moore going to try again on Ream, at least looking there. Keeps on looking, but it's all up to if Eli Bright gives him a push there on that inside lane. 
uh, but anyway, it does have some good people behind. If you were to make um, a move, Eli Bright, Zach Fitzroy, and Andrew Miller, all three of them are really good drivers, very experienced drivers in this community. So if the uh, five of Baymore wanted to make a move, he probably could with those three behind him, but no one's been able to. Still double file here at Daytona for the Burger King 250. And I think it might come down to either Williamson or Gronkowski for this week when they got up to the front really, really quickly and they've not been able to lose it at all coming to 10 laps to go here at Daytona. It's going to be very interesting. If it stays this way, it's going to be between Williamson and Gronkowski and there really isn't a way to tell who's going to get it. Of course, we had the Wawa Sprint Series here not too long ago. And once we got to a certain point, it was three guys. There were actually three wide throughout a majority of that race. But uh, we had three guys that kind of just gridlocked the field throughout the entire event. But you really didn't know who was going to win until they crossed the line. And uh, we could easily be seeing that with Williamson and Gronkowski. But then again, I would not count out these guys behind him. You have Barreto there looking to peak. Benny Moore has been looking kind of aggressive. But we're still at a point where if they were to make the move and start opening that up, they may get shoveled to the back. And uh, that might be why there's waiting to make that move right here. 10 laps to go, coming in 9 laps to go. We do have uh, 2 caution laps on, so if they crash for 5 laps to go, we will still have a restart at the point of no return. It's 3 laps to go. So they can get aggressive if they want to, but they are not ch uh, choosing to do so yet. Here in the Burger King 250, it, it's still Williamson and Gronkowski 1 2. And I don't know. I think it might come down to these two. It's just, there's not enough momentum, I guess, in the pat to really make it three and four wide like we are used to seeing here at Daytona but Benny Moore I, I, he keeps on trying but just can't get below uh, Bradley Green right there. Mm -hmm. I gotta give credit to these guys for having a nice clean race here and uh, it's good to see him not wreck right away and, and just kind of race it out you know I'm sure the teams are appreciative of that as well not a very expensive race for these guys but uh we're just going to have to see. I mean, Josh Williamson and Chad Gronkowski have just been holding this field the entire race. It's going to be interesting to see if anyone can dethrone him here with a few laps left. But anything is possible. And if one guy kind of gets in there, could shuffle that whole aerodynamic scheme up between those two guys. And uh, we could definitely see a few more passes for the race lead. It's going to be interesting to see as well, even if Williamson may have an opportunity, as Benny Moore is really now going for it. That may open the door for... Eli Bright and Benny Moore's really trying, but this is no hole for any of those guys right there. I have to give Benny Moore a lot of credit. He's trying to make the, the move on Bradley Green, but he can't get there. He's just not getting enough of, of a suck of the draft. He's not getting enough help from behind, and it's just not working out. And now, the whole field is double filed, just like we started this thing here at, at Daytona for the Burger King 250. and. Definitely not what we were expecting here to kick off the season, but I don't think we've, I think only one of the time we've had a caution free race here at Daytona, and that was all the way back on I think season two, season one or season two of the, uh, what was Red Bull Cup Series and now JBL Cup Series, so it's not happened that often, so I think this might be the second time that we go caution free if it stays like this, but how about that Cameron, he's making some moves back here in the middle of the field, maybe he can make something work. Well, not from the number four of Aaron Abel, but it's, it's getting close to one out, out of time and six laps to go. I'm looking at the 32 there, Lana Smith Jr. Uh, he's starting to peek out a little bit there on Gronkowski, and he has the opportunity to maybe go to the outside of them. That could get interesting. You know, it's also going to be interesting, too, that inside lane can push Williamson past Gronkowski, and will Williamson be able to make the move? The thing is, neither of these drivers have been able to get ahead of the other yet. And uh, that's why we've kind of been at a stalemate right now between these two guys. But Barreto's still there. And, and the thing is, you know, if you're Barreto, if you're Bradley Ream, you don't want to make a move and risk cycling back. You know, you want to stay in that position and just be in position to take that lead away near the end of the race. We've got five laps to go here in this Burger King 250. Oh, here we go. Here comes the 35. Oh, there we go. A Barreto with five laps to go finally for the first time since I think lap one, three wide for the race lead. And how, and how about this, the part-time driver of Barreto is going to take the race lead, and now we might see some crazy race in here. Yeah, they, they just took Williamson out of contention right here. He's now in that three-wide three lane in the middle, 
And that's exactly what Bradley Ream and Benny Moore wanted, and obviously what Igor Barreto wanted as well. But Chad Gronkowski still in that outside lane. It doesn't really affect him that much. But uh, if Ream makes a three wide here and we start getting three wide up through the front, it's anybody's guess on who gets this race victory. And we are starting to get three wide uh, for the front besides these top two. But Bradley Ream is really leaning this inside lane from up from Fitzy. Amp anymore now with four laps go. It's getting intense that day turn for the Burger King 250. We got Reem, more Fitzy and Mill all on the since I ain't. Oh my goodness, I thought Fitzy was gonna make it four three, wide. Almost went four wide. Fitzy will be the person. Been one of the more aggressive drives. Hey, look at Fitzy there. Fitzy. Look at Fitzy in that 75. And you know, and now we're at a point where we could actually see a cycle. Fitzy could get this race victory. But Bradley Ream getting that push there from Benny Moore. Oh, to go here at Fitzy. Daytona. There's Fitzy. your four wide. <laughs> Almost. And Benny Moore is the one kind of forcing that four wide there. It's always the guy who moves up that really is at fault. I mean, if you're the guy behind, the guy who makes that door open, you know, you're just taking the door, you know. And it's that guy who opens up that door that pushes up into that uh, third and fourth car that causes that accident. If that occurs, but thankfully that did not occur. And now Benny Moore is going to have some help here from Fitzy, and that inside lane is really starting to come into play here. Two laps go out the line here in the Burger King 250. Things really changed in the heartbeat. The first 20 laps was calm, but now the final five laps have been crazy. Benny Moore out front, and here comes Fitzy. Here comes the one of the part time dogs in the middle, and where did Jordan Stout and Clinton Buchanan come from? I have no idea. Derek Hamill is up here as well. Two laps to go at Daytona. And is anybody's a uh, full of taken? Look at that. Andrew Miller got a huge push from Stout there in the seven. And I and I've heard, haven't heard this name in forever. Clint Buchanan in the 33. Well, you want to race on my channel like seven years ago, and here he is battling with these guys here at Daytona. And he could be in a good position. Look at the 99. He started 39th, Derek Camel. <laughs> and Derek he's Camel. moving up. Derek, have a great finish here at Daytona. Derek Camel, the four of a of uh, Mayo and Abel, the 17th of Shane Winslow. Where did all these twats come from? Here we go, white flag in the book, King 250, and here comes Jordan Stout, who's been really, really dominant in the, the JBL Cup Series this season. He is now to the lead, and if Derek Hamill, he might win this thing. He's mm -hmm. charging his number 99. Absolutely, you know, a very aggressive driver, no doubt about it, and he could have a shot, Clint Buchanan here in the 33. He's got a shot now to the inside of the seven, and that may open the door for Hamill. If Hamill can get three wide to the inside, but Jordan Stout may have this one here. If he can clear the eyes, oh, he's going to be able to do it. We'll just have to see. Will it be Jordan Stout or Clinton Buchanan? Clinton Buchanan, I believe, has never raced on my channel before, but I think he's going to do it here. And he is. Clinton Buchanan's going to win the Burger King 250 in a chaotic that? last five laps. How about Who that? Who saw that coming? Clinton Buchanan, never heard of him before, never raced on my channel before, and he gets the job done at Daytona. That that really came out of left field there. I mean, I thought that we were going to have Gronkowski and Williamson just dominate all the way to the end, and then Barreto got to the inside, and that's exactly what I was saying. I think Barreto made the move too early. Because as I was saying, just a couple laps before he made that move, you kind of want to stay in that second position, that third position, fifth position on that inside. Because if you're right there and you're the end of the race and you know you can make the move, then you're going to have a better chance of winning. Because once you open up that three wide and they start the cycle, you're going to get passed again. And it's going to be a lot harder to hold on to the race lead. So, fascinating race, but congratulations to Clinton Buchanan. It's great to, it's great to say that name again. It's been a long time coming. Great to have him back in victory lane. Clinton Buchanan with the win here at Daytona. Jordan Stout, I thought he was going to get the job done, but second place for the number seven for Spy Most was Dale Campbell. How about that? Dale Campbell started all the way back on 39th, and he gets third out of nowhere. Fantastic one from Dale Campbell. Fantastic one by Andrew Miller, part time driver, the highest one, and uh, and Abel, I know it, in fifth. Barreto and six, Fitzy in 7th, Shane Winsoff in 8th, I don't know where he came from, uh, Josh Winston in ninth, and Ben Moore in 10th, Eric Sean in 11th, Eli Bright in 12th, Bradley Ream in 13th, John uh, Hernandez in 14th, and Sam Watson in 15th, the third part-time driver, Jack Wankowski, have to feel for him, he dominated this race on the top side, I think he might have led the most laps, but he gets 16th in this one. 
Jason Lona in 17th, Lance Jr. in 18th, Stephen Collin in 19th, Colin Quapley in 20th. Going through the rest of the field. And uh, all fully trucks finished, no one had any mechanical issues. Had no crashes, no cautions. Surprisingly, um, we went clean and clean, but it got crazy at the end. That's for sure, and Clinton Buchanan with the win, and what a, wow, what an interesting way to see our day talk. Absolutely. Very, very fascinating race there. Very close finish, too, as well, for Clint Buchanan to get it done. Um, head of Jordan's down. We didn't see any of those guys really up front until the end of the race, especially those top three. You know, Miller and Fitzwater were kind of, you know, hanging in there in that top 15 or so, but, um, yeah, you just never know here at Daytona, and like I said, you know, you need a lot of luck to win here at the Daytona International Speedway, and uh, I think that was a lot of, you know, what came into play at the end of that race. It really wasn't down to who had the fastest car, just the time you were in that inside lane at the right time to get the race victory, and that's exactly what happened there with Clint Buchanan. Clinton Buchanan, first time on the channel, gets the job done, and I'm looking forward to this season. If that is what we see all season long, then we are in, in for a tweet. Got a unique schedule, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, next race will be two weeks from now at All Club Speedway for a little bit of a West Coast swing for the, these truck series drivers. We go from to All Club, to Vegas, to for the first time ever on the channel, Little Spring. So how do you think that West Coast swing might go for, for these truck drivers? It's going to be very interesting to see. Auto Club's a track that you don't really see in the truck series that often, but uh, and you, you and I are about to record a race at Auto Club here in uh, just a couple of moments, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But, you know, it's a fun racetrack, um, you know, very wide, wide-sweeping racetrack, so uh, definitely looking forward to seeing how uh, these guys race there at the Auto Club Speedway. For sure, it's going to be a fantastic season. Race 1 is in the books. A calm Daytona, but a crazy, crazy finish, and Clinton Buchanan gets his first clear win on NS Racing 97. Thank you guys so much for watching here at Daytona for season 4 of the Power Truck Series. And uh, the points uh, and the book of the year points are coming up next year. And uh, until two weeks from now to kick off the West Coast Swing at All Club Speedway. Full out, uh, full out scram, I'm NS Racing 97, aka Nathan Satan. And we will see you guys next time at All Club Speedway. Bye!